All right, hello everyone. I'm lucky to have Ken Reed here with us today. For the few people out there who have never heard of him before, Ken has won multiple world North American national sailing titles. He most recently raced twice around the world on Puma Ocean Racing during the 0809 and then again in the 11 to 12 editions of the Volvo Ocean Race. His America's Cup experience is just as impressive having raced with Pac-95 during the 95 America's Cup as well as being the helmsman for Dennis Connor on board Stars and Stripes in the 2000 and 2003 America's Cup campaign. Ken has now taken over as the president of North Sales and it's a pleasure to introduce to him to you guys today. So Ken, thank you for joining me. My pleasure. Great to be here. Um, where did you originally grow up and how did you get into sailing? Well, I grew up uh, right around here on Narragansett Bay. Um, I sailed out of the Barrington Yacht Club when I was a kid. I really, in a way, had a completely standard childhood with regard to sailing. You know, I just it, We didn't have opties back then. I'm a little older, so uh, we had sunfish and yeah. grew up sailing sunfish and then 420s and you know, just kept uh, college, really, Boston University was as much of a breakthrough as anything. That's, I, I always tell people that's where I really learned how to sail, learned how to win uh, at BU against, against you know, high caliber competition and um, just kept snowballing. You know, all of a sudden I had a job in the marine world right out of college in, here in Newport in, in the sail making business. Kind of um, just spent a lot of time with a guy named Bill Shore, who was a kind of a, a multi world champion in his own right. And he was my boss, and we sailed together a ton. I learned a lot from him and just kept, I don't know, kept winning and kept getting chances. So it, it's been a pretty nice little career so far. So, what attracted you to ocean racing as opposed to like inshore racing when you started to get into it more? Well, I guess I had always watched the Whitbread and then the Volvo from afar and kind of in awe. Never in a million years did I think I would do it. And uh, I had an opportunity to, uh, just out of the blue, this is three Volvos ago, I guess, when Ericsson first did it. Uh -huh. They were struggling a little bit, and they, they were, they were pre-race favorites. I had done some, you know, I'd done a bunch of Bermuda races, and let's see, I'd, I'd done a Transpac or two, and, and uh, you know, I, I guess I'd done a Transatlantic by then, but... You know, nothing major, and I enjoyed it. I, I didn't, I didn't necessarily love it, but um, <laughs> I guess in a way, I was kind of getting sick of going around the buoys, and I got this opportunity to join Ericsson for a few legs, and and I, I it was crazy, it was wild. I was blown away by the whole experience. I, it was either try to do a Volvo or try to raise the money to possibly do a cup program, and. To be honest, the Volvo was about a quarter of the budget, and I thought maybe sometime I could pull it off. And I met the right person at the right time and got involved with Puma, and yeah, the rest is history. Puma was kind of a gift from heaven, and uh, well, or hell, depending on what day of the week. <laughs> and right. it was, it was, uh, it, it was really lucky. The whole thing was very fortunate. So you've had many amazing accomplishments in your career so far, including, of course, the Volvos and then the different America's Cups that you've been involved in, as well as all the other titles that you've accumulated over your career and everything. What do you think's been some of the toughest projects you've been involved with and why? Oh, well, certainly the Volvo uh, has was by far the toughest projects. And, and it's not just... Um, you know, it's not the competition. It's not... You know, every to be honest, every regatta is equally hard when it comes to competition because I, I, I guess I've treated them all reasonably equal over the years. Even though some might have more press or some might have more exposure, you know, to me, a boat race is a boat race. I, I get the same butterflies if I'm starting a Tuesday night race out here in in my Etchells or or a, my Martian Thirty Two than I do when I'm on the starting line of a cup, um, you know, match racing in a cup race. So yeah. to me, that's not the big deal. The, the big deal with the Volvo race is A, the responsibility of it, B, running the whole thing. And in, in essence, I decided after the second cup program with Dennis that if I was going to run a, be part of a big program again, I wanted to be able to look myself in the mirror at the end of the day and say, you did really well or you screwed it up. And and if I was going to get blamed for it, I actually wanted to make the decisions. And, and, um, the, the Volvo gave me that opportunity. It was it, a lot of pressure, a lot of miserable days of sailing, as Ricky Depp can can um, absolutely uh, stand up for. Oh yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's just it's the best of times and the worst of times. You push yourself harder than you ever thought you could. You uh, you see things in yourself that you never knew you had. 
Um, uh, and then the management, the lifetime friendships, the experience, the travel, uh, what your family goes through through the whole thing. It was, it was hard, really hard, but so unbelievably worth it. I can't even tell you. So you were just sort of, you know, saying about some of the, you know, bad weather, things like that. You know, we all know, or at least I would hope that everybody knows that weather systems pack the winds and everything else. It can get you out in front of the pack really quick. But it's also the same thing that if you get stuck in the middle of it with just one mistake, you know, you can be in a whole world of trouble. How do you guys deal with fear when you are literally thousands of miles from shore? Mm. Uh, don't let it creep into your mind. <laughs> don't. I think that that's the... You know, I, I don't ever, I don't, people ask me this all the time. And I think the honest truth is, I don't ever remember being scared. I remember um, being apprehensive about the next weather system. And to me, the, the most nerve wracking days in a Volvo race aren't when you're in a storm. When you're in a storm, you're just dealing with it. It's just another day and you're just, yeah. just deal with it. Um, to me, it was the two or three days preceding the storm when you saw this big red blob on the on the weather forecast uh, on the on your charts coming bearing down on you just knowing oh man this is gonna suck you know yeah. so uh, it's not it, it yes yeah, i don't think it was ever fear it was just more kind of pissed off like ugh, we're gonna this really this is gonna be really hard and and then it's how hard to push it you know there was probably i don't know one two three or four times in two around the world races that I remember honestly backing off a little bit because of trying to keep the boat and the people in one piece. Yeah. But for the most part, you throw a brick on the accelerator and hold on and, and hopefully you can steer through the next, uh, the next curve that, that gets thrown at you. And yeah, well, we made it around twice. So that's a good feature. So what's your new take on the one design boats, or excuse me, what's your take on the new one design boats that they're using in the VOR now? Well, it's, it's different. It's changed. Um, the, I think it's fair to say that, that the Volvo race is different. Um, it's still going to be brutally hard. Hopefully it still attracts the, the competition that have been there in the past. I mean, I have to admit that one of the things I really enjoyed about the Volvo race is the development of the boats. So, I personally miss that side of it, um, but I, at the same time, I completely understand why the decisions were made. Um, the, the The fact is, it just needed more participation, and and this is this is a, a very bold attempt to get more participation. I think a lot of the big regattas like this, I, you know, we wouldn't be surprised to see the Americas Cup going in the same direction where where one design or one design, large one design aspects of, of the event are really going to take hold where it used to all be about development. And again, it, it's different. Um, and old guys like me, maybe we don't like difference so much, but, uh, <laughs> but it, uh, it's still going to be hard. I know it's, it, it's still going to be brutally hard and, and, um, and that part of it will never change. So you, you, you sort of brought up sort of right into the next question that I was thinking for you, and that is that, you know, we've seen some incredible advances in technology in the America's Cup boats over the recent years. What do you think are some of the most remarkable things that have popped up? Uh, well, I think that the, the development of these boats that can go, you know, 25, 20, you know, well, the world 24-hour record is held by a Volvo 70, you know, uh, 25 and change uh, average around the clock. Mm -hmm. um, sustaining the speeds that these boats sustain, um, being so tough that you can push them as hard. It, like every time I brought somebody out, if it was a windy day here and we were training off of Newport and you know, we'd bring our mask guy out or we'd bring one of our sail guys out or somebody from off the program, a friend of mine, bring them out for the day. If it was windy, coming back in and we're broad reaching and running, they'd be like, you got to be kidding me. And this is in you know, three foot waves off of Newport. And you know, the boat's covered with water and you're just ripping along at a million miles an hour. And um, what carbon fiber has done, what uh, in, in that sort of technology, how far it's come, um, canting keels, um, the boat shapes, the width of the boats, the, the form stability, uh, the carbon rigs, of course, the sails, you know, the, 
especially with the newest generation of 3D eye sales that are just so tough and so strong, uh, yet yet light and you know kind of pliable. Um, just everything, the, the weather, the, the communication systems on board the boat, um, how good the weather forecasting has become. In essence, it, it gets you around the world faster, but also keeps you out of real imminent danger as well. The, the weather forecasting is a security blanket that I think a lot of people don't realize. Because the boats are fast enough, if it was going to get nasty, the boats are fast enough to chase away from it. And, and that's a nice feature sometimes, even though we were never smart enough to take that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, it's really bad as stern. Furling systems, um, uh, like I said, mast technology, uh, um, you know, uh, winch systems, everything. There, there's no part of these boats that hasn't helped revolutionize other aspects of the sailing world. And, and, that's, and that's what races like this are for. They're, they're to help develop boats outside of the actual race that they're a part of. And that's a great thing. For others who may be looking to get into offshore racing, what's the one or two best you know bits of advice that you could give them? Well, um, first of all, you just have to keep finding opportunities. So you got to start small and work yourself up, and you keep winning, or you develop a reputation of being. I think it's as much as as like particular skill level is concerned. Mm -hmm. I think it's not as important as just toughness and ability to work yep. and. If you have the reputation of being a hard worker, you will find a ride. I guarantee it. And then you just keep graduating to certain levels uh, uh, within the sport. So you, just, you have to keep winning and you have to develop that reputation. You know, a kid like Rome Kirby just developed a reputation of working hard, you know, yeah. and all of a sudden he gets invited on a Volvo program. Next thing you know, he's winning the America's Cup and now, you know, sky's the limit. So he works hard. He's, he has zero fear. He works hard. And... He doesn't mind getting dirty, and, and if you if you take those uh, those attributes, you can do not just offshore sailing; you can do just about anything. So, what does the future hold for you, and what's your next big project, or is there one? Well, I'm riding a desk right now. It's comfortable. Um, uh, I'm probably not in the gym nearly as much as I should be. Um, you know, I, I've told several of the guys who've signed up for the Volvo if they need if they somebody gets nicked up and they need somebody for a leg or two, I'm their guy. I, but right now, when I when I did the second Volvo um, uh, Puma, uh, you know, Puma had, was kind of on the fence, and and I was kind of on the fence. And we all decided, you know, what we've had a good run. Uh, this is probably enough for now, and and that was the right decision for me at the time. And then. When the when I, I came back with North, uh, I've I've had to tell them that that I'm going to stick around here for a little while and and try to make a nice little go um, in, in the in the business side of the marine world. So I still get to sail quite a bit. I sail a lot of big boats. Um, I, I I do a lot of the types of sailing that the president of a company should go s sail and and. Uh, taking care of good clients, and and uh, I still have a we have a 32 foot catamaran here in town that we go play around on, and but it, this is about trying to make North better now, and so that's my latest race, you know, my, that's that's my latest competition. Well, Ken, this has been fantastic, and thank you very much for spending some time with us this afternoon, and you know, good luck with everything you're doing over at North. I know that a lot of people love the product without a doubt, um, and I think they're probably definitely better having you there too. Well, it's it's uh, good fun and good luck with the your Volvo, your chances with the Volvo. When you talk to Ricky, tell him I said hello. I will certainly do that. Thank you so much, Ken. I appreciate it. Okay.